Today's debate, ladies and gentlemen, has essentially boiled down to one question. How best do we help the various groups in Singapore society, ladies and gentlemen? Are they best helped if we give financial assistance to unemployed workers, ladies and gentlemen? Or are they best helped if we limit this only to, to the employed? And I will show you how, through the three main groups that emerged in today's debate, how this, how this is entirely not the case, how this motion still stands. Firstly, on the first group, unemployed workers. Secondly, on, on the immigrants. And lastly, on this mysterious group of charity organisations, which the closing opposition team has brought up. So, on to the first point of the unemployed workers. Now, throughout today's entire debate, the opposition teams have been asserting to us that for some mysterious reason, unemployed workers are completely unable to survive, ladies and gentlemen, even without current government assistance. No, thank you, sir. Now, today we realise that, as I've already mentioned, as my team has repeatedly mentioned, that there are multiple means uh, by which by which these people can actually do receive income. For like, for example, the retrenchment benefits which they receive, and in fact, Ladies and gentlemen, what we have noticed is that Singapore has one of the highest wow. saving rates among, among more de developed and developing nations, ladies and gentlemen. A saving rate of almost 18.7%, according to The Economist lately, ladies and gentlemen. So what we see is that these people aren't simply left stranded on the street to starve, ladies and gentlemen. They do have the wherewithal to, to, to withstand this period of unemployment, which is relatively short by the, by the standards of, of the majority of other countries. As my earlier speaker already pointed to you, two months only, ladies and gentlemen. So clearly, what we see is that there is no pressing immediate need for us to give these retrenched workers sure. financial assistance to survive. No, thank you, sir. Now let's, now let's look at the long term, ladies and gentlemen, what happens when we do give them this financial assistance. Now, my earlier speaker has already told you how this group of involuntarily unemployed people simply do not exist, ladies and gentlemen, because the fact is that there are, there are a multitude of job opportunities available in Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and, and, and the fact that these people are unemployed just indicates that these people simply do not want to take on these jobs, ladies and gentlemen. Points of... Uh, in a minute, sir, the fact is, because of, the, of how they feel that these jobs are perhaps beneath them, ladies and gentlemen, beneath their pay grade, this inflexibility, ladies and gentlemen, has resulted in them being unemployed in the first place. How can you condone this? No, sir, we are actually, no, we are actually assuming that everyone out there is actually have full ability to work, but what about those who are out there who are disabled, those who can't stand, those you, who can't sir. move? Sir... Mm -hmm. I have to... Uh, it is extremely mysterious to me why the opposition today has chosen to classify these, these, these are people of disabled they, uh, under the same category as able-bodied workers, ladies and gentlemen. We have never once suggested that we are doing so. In fact, we suggest that these disabled people should receive be benefits, ladies and gentlemen, but these are not unemployment benefits. They are social welfare, ladies and gentlemen. This is given out to these workers in recognition of their separate category, ladies and gentlemen, in recognition of the fact that the government needs no. to help them because of how they are entirely distinct. No, thank you, sir. So now let me return back to my case for today. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because what this means is that the fact is the unemployed people in Singapore today are simply inflexible in adapting to new circumstances. So. And, no thank you, sir, if we reduce the incentive for them to take on additional employment, ladies and gentlemen, by giving them financial assistance, I can only say that because of how you postpone them, uh, you reduce the incentive for them to adopt jobs, training, and so on, ladies and gentlemen, you can only entrench this idea of inflexibility because you allow them to hold out for a longer period of time. Ladies and gentlemen, and ultimately this is detrimental impact to the Singaporean economy, detrimental impact to our competitiveness in the global workplace, ladies and gentlemen. But ultimately, what we must recognise is that above and beyond the limited resources the Singapore government has, we must realise that the Singapore government, what it does, has an impact on the, on the, on, on the ways, on the attitudes of everyday Singaporeans, ladies and gentlemen. And what we say is that the Singapore government has to, has to recognise this fact that it has, ladies and gentlemen, to spend in a way that is responsible and allows Singaporeans to best benefit. So, having dealt with this, let me now move on to my second point of contention, the quality of immigrants. Now, we do not agree, ladies and gentlemen, we, do, we, we agree, ladies and gentlemen, that not giving financial assistance to, uh, to everyone will re reduce the number of immigrants. But let's ask, ladies and gentlemen, about the exact nature of the sort of immigrants we want to invite to Singapore. Now, what the opposition has told us is that somehow, is that somehow, upon being given this sort of, sort of guarantee, ladies and gentlemen, people will flock to Singapore. Exactly. What we have to realize is that this is tantamount, ladies and gentlemen, to paying them to migrate to Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. This is tantamount to giving them the assurance that, if, that, that, that in crisis they will not be abandoned by the government. What this means is that Singapore ultimately attracts people who stick to them in, uh, only in the good times, ladies and gentlemen. In the bad times, they either leave for overseas again, they return to their home countries, or they simply stay and leech off the government. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is fundamentally not the sort of Singaporeans our society needs. And if we, if we, if we receive fewer immigrants, but we receive ones who are better in nature, we say this is ultimately something that is best for the country. And also this last idea of charity organisations. Now, the opposition has asserted that mysteriously, charity organisations today are not receiving enough publicity, are, are, receiving, are experiencing a dip in contributions, ladies and gentlemen. Yet well, what we see is that giving financial assistance to the unemployed fundamentally does not change anything in this. There is no link between their substantive and the motion. So clearly, this... All of these points, ladies and gentlemen, fall on the side of the proposition. This motion stands.